Good morning, everyone. It's good to see the family of the Lord again. It's good to see Brother Derek that is back. We miss his smile. He's smiling and encouraging the congregation all the time when he, he come forward. And one month ago, I spoke about a less famous man. His name was Belshazzar, king of Babylon. And we learn that he prepared a feast for his nobles, concubines, uh, his wives, for all the aristocrat people of the kingdom. But he saw, during his feast, he saw a uh, hand write it down on the wall. And he was desperate. He was very scared. He was about everything. But he didn't repent. And he was laying the same night or the same feast. It was a message of God for him on the wall. And he had the time to repent. But he didn't want to repent. He was his own decision. Now, this morning, I'm talking about another man. And the title of my message is Pharaoh, Rebel Man. This man was so rebel against the Lord God. The last one that I spoke, he was a blasphemous. Of course, he was also a rebel man. This one is a rebel man, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. So now I said that we're going to be talking about Pharaoh, a rebel man. Exodus chapter 5, verse 1 and verse 2. Let's go with the introduction. Moses and Aaron traveled from Goshen to Memphis. The word Goshen means land of grass. There was a lot of grass over there. Almost the whole country was a desert. But this area of the country was a lot of grass over there. Aaron, the man of God, the prophet of God. Aaron, the oldest brother of Moses. Goshen, the land of grass. Memphis, the capital of the country of Egypt, where the king was reigning, where Pharaoh was reigning. They traveled to Memphis to meet the king. To meet Pharaoh. This took tremendous courage. He was a dictator, not only a king. He, this man was a dictator. This man was conceived, I'm sorry, was considered himself like a god in the same level of position that the rest of the gods of idols in Egypt, in the country. He sat in the temple and he received worship or adoration from all people in Egypt. Pharaoh was nothing like a public servant. The entire public lived to serve him. His power, authority were supreme. And there was no constitution, no Congress that was opposing to him. He didn't, have, didn't, he didn't have to ask permission to the Congress or to the other people to do something. There was no law or legislature higher or even remotely equal to him. He was an extremely powerful man 
in the country. It was raining in the whole country. And he was considering in the same position as our Lord God. And so for Moses, it wasn't easy, this encounter. It was too hard. He needs a lot of courage to meet a man like this one. Actually, we see many men similar to this one. Killing another people, seeking power, trying to control the whole world, feeling in the, in the same position as this man. So for Moses, for me, it was a tremendous decision of Moses and courage. Sometimes we are afraid when I had to come right here to be speaking for you and I'm nervous. I got butterfly in my stomach. I'm seeing uh, uh, Brother Charles, uh, another speaker, say, I don't know if I'm going to do a good job right here. I'm seeing the whole congregation. I'm prepping myself, studying the Bible, reviewing my topic. And I know that you consider me, you love me, you encourage me. But anyway, we feel nervous when we come right here for to be teaching or preaching. Now imagine Moses. He lived in Egypt. He knew his language, his culture. He knew all about this. And he asked to the Lord, you are sending me over there. What am I going to say when I get over there? And the Lord said, don't worry, I'm going to be with you. But was his own decision of Moses to go over there? And he went and he spoke to the king, to Pharaoh. There was, the Bible said, that there was a plan. The Lord God got a plan. And the Lord God revealed his plan to Moses. He explained to Moses his plan. The Lord God is explaining to us his plan. He revealed his plan now in the Bible. We got a plan. We got a plan of salvation. We got a plan how to be organized in the congregation. We got a plan how to give or offering. We have, we have a plan that we need to follow. He revealed his plan. He also revealed his plan to his servants, to Moses and Aaron. He explained everything. I know, the Lord said, I know that it's not going to be easy to get talking with that man. I know. The Lord knew that. I know that he is going to rebel against you and against me. The Lord God knows everything. He knows now. It's not easy to wake up. So we are tired. My, my advice for my family is get early to bed on Saturday to be Sunday morning with energy to wake up. Brothers and sisters, if we go late to bed, we are going to have trouble to wake up in the morning. We have been working from Monday to Friday. Some brothers and sisters, including Saturday, sometimes they work Saturday. We are tired. Physically, we are tired. So, that's the advice. Go early to the bed. You are going to have energy next day to be here. And the Lord God, he knows that. He knew that it was going to be a hard job. But the Lord said, go, I'm going to be with you. And I know that this guy is going to rebel against me. I know. He also said, I'm going to harden his heart. 
People sometimes confused when he read this verse. But the Bible said that Pharaoh had more times his heart than the time that the God said in the Bible that he hardened his heart. And my understanding is God hardened and softened the heart of the man. How? How the Lord does that thing? It's simple to know. Just with his message. With his word. For some people that are rebel people or disobedient people, the message of God is hard for them. In that way, God hardened the heart of those people. They stumble in the message of God because their heart are hard. Not because the message is hard. That's a simple way. How is the other way that God softened the heart of other people? In the same way, with the message. With the message. There's no other way. Or heart. Or heart is softened because we want to accept this message of God. His heart was hardened because he didn't want to accept the message of God. He considered himself a God. The plan of God was, tell to him that you come in my name. And Moses and Aaron introduced to the king, we come on behalf of the Lord God. We are talking right now not in our own name, but in the name of God. And his petition is, release his people from bondage. Release his people. God is saying that these people that you got in captivity is his people. These people have one God. No many gods. There is only one God for these people, for Israel. Right here, you got many gods. They got many gods. God's idol for everything. Israel got only one God. The church got only one God. We got only one God, only one Savior. We adore Him, we worship Him, we submit to Him, we obey Him. We got only one God. That was the plan. Release my people from bondage. You are going to say that to the king, to Pharaoh. Verse 5. Now. The Lord God continued releasing people from bondage of sin. He's so merciful. He continued releasing people. Now he released humanity from bondage of sin. This is the worst slavery. This is the worst. Jesus said when he came, to his own city. He said, he get in the synagogue, he took the book, the book of the prophet Isaiah, and he started reading the book, the scripture of the prophet Isaiah, and he said, the spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit of oh, my father, it's upon me, Jesus is saying. It's upon me because he anointed me to proclaim release to the captives. Release people not from the prison of the government. I had some experience in my country that I went to the prison.
to preach the gospel. And some people were listening, the preaching, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and some people were baptized. And some of them, they told me, brother, now you're going to help me to try to get out of here as soon as possible. I, I respond sometimes, yes, we're going to try to help you. Now you got more help than before. You got the help, first of all, of God. God is with you now. We got the help now of the church. But, brother, to be honest, we're going to try to do our best. But if you are guilty, you are going to continue paying for this. We're going to try to help you. We're going to try to help you. And sometimes we hurt, and they get out earlier, but others not. We have to pay for the consequences of our sins. We have to pay for that. God never has promised that we are going to be in peace or living relaxing. If we see around, we're going to see many brothers and sisters living in poverty, in need. Other people in the world living better. But God is not promising to solve that kind of situation. He's helping those problems or the material problem, poverty in the world, in the cities, or in every country. That's responsibility of the government. We are commanded for God. The church is commanded for God to spread the word, to preach the gospel. When Jesus is saying right here, because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he's not talking about the financial situation. The poor, the people in a spiritual need. He has sent me to proclaim Release to the captives, not people from prisons. Captives in the prison of sin. Captives for the devil. We were in prison before to know Jesus Christ. But people continue in prison because they don't know yet Jesus Christ. So the Lord is still releasing humanity from bandage of sin. And Jesus continued reading, and recovery of sight to the blind. He, may, he performed many physical miracles. But his purpose, his real purpose was to make see the people that was blind spiritually. Talking in the spiritual sense. The Pharisees, they say, we saw perfectly, we know the Lord God. Jesus said, you are blind. And Jesus continued reading. He said, to sell free, to sell free those who are oppressed. Oppressed for the devil. To proclaim, Jesus saying, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. This is the opportunity. This is the time. That humanity found grace before the eyes of my father. That's what Jesus was saying. This is a, me a message of salvation, of hope. He finished to read it, and he came back to his seat. And all people in the synagogue was looking at him. Who is this? He said. I am the one. I am the Savior. It was the same thing that God was saying to Pharaoh through his servant. Release my people. Jesus came to release people, the human being. We are released now. We are free. Thanks to his mercy. Thanks to Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and verse 9. Pharaoh, what happened with Pharaoh? Pharaoh rebelled against God's plan. God presents 
through his servants, his plan. But Pharaoh rebel against God's plan. God's request. What is the God's request? Let my people go. This is the petition or the request of God. Let my people go to the wilderness to make a feast for me, to worship me. This is my people. Pharaoh's answer, more than an answer, is a challenging. What was his answer? Who is the Lord? That I should obey his boy to let Israel go. Who does he think he is? A young the Lord. A young God. Why? Why do I have to obey? What do I have to do? obey his voice? If I really knew who the Lord was, he could love gladly release Israel. If people really knew who Jesus is, all this city of San Jose be with him, worship him. If the world really knew who is God, all the world should be in peace. He is the prince of peace. He is a God of love, but people don't want to submit to God. The problems gonna be continuing and continue, brothers. Don't be surprised. People is not submitting to God. This is gonna continue. Let's continue faithful to God. We are trusting and believing in the one, in the one and true God. That was the answer of Pharaoh. Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? In the following verse. The prophet said, please, can you imagine that? God asking to the sinners, please. God is asking now to us, please, believe in me. Please believe in my song. And we are responding at the same way as Pharaoh. Who is Jesus Christ? I don't believe in that Jesus Christ. He was a simple man. Other people said he didn't exist. It's not true. Others says, oh, he was a good man. But he was like one more prophet, similar to the rest of the prophet. Others said, other people says, he is the savior, but he is not the same as God. As the father. Anyway, they are denying Jesus Christ. They are saying, who is Jesus? To follow him. The same way as Pharaoh responds to the prophet and his brother Aaron. who was responding at the same time to God. His answer was to God. This rebellion or the human being this has been through the centuries through the centuries this rebellion for example at the beginning Genesis Adam and Eve they rebel against the Lord he created them he gave orders then but they rebel against the Lord in a selfish way they disobey God they rebel against the Lord and they ate 
the fruit that the Lord God said, don't eat that fruit. They ate that fruit and they disobeyed God. What about Israel? Israel was in slavery. The Lord God released them from uh, uh, the uh, slavery. Now they are in the desert, but they rebel against the Lord, saying, it's better for us to come back to Egypt. We are so tired to continue eating this manna. We prefer the baseball that we ate in Egypt. Much better food. They rebelled against the Lord. 430 years of slavery. Now the Lord released them, but now they are rebelling against him in the desert. Have you gone, wondered yourself why the Lord got away? When I, I, I ask this question to myself, I respond in, in the following way. It's similar to the same way that Jesus is delaying to come back for his church. Why Jesus is delaying too much? It's a lot of wickedness, a lot of uh, sin, a lot of a, a lot of bad and wrong things in the world. Why? He's not coming back. Because in his love and his mercy, he's giving more time to the people to repent. 430 years, it was the same time that God was giving to the Canaanites to repent. Remember, he removed the Canaanite of their own land and bring into them to Israel. But to decide to do that, he was waiting, waiting. The Lord is amazing. It's amazing. In his time, he's making his decision, and all his decisions are perfect. 430 years. Remember, with Noah, 120 years. Why too long to prepare an ark? The same time that he was giving to the wicked people to repent. That's the reason that the Lord waited that time to release his people. But another rebellion. This is the worst rebellion of humanity. The rejection of Jesus Christ. People still rejecting Jesus Christ. When we, when we don't accept. Jesus, as the Son of God, we are rejecting Him. When we don't obey His commands, we are rejecting Him. When we are not faithful, we are rejecting Him. This is the worst rejection of humanity, the rejection of Jesus Christ. People said, release Barabbas, and crucifies Jesus. So sad. What was the spiritual condition of Pharaoh? Poor condition. So poor. He didn't know the Lord. That's so sad. He knew all gods of Egypt, but he didn't know the only one and true God. This remind me, this remind me the city of Athens in the time of the Apostle Paul. While Paul was waiting for his friend Timothy and Silas, the Bible said that his spirit was still in him when he saw the city holy giving to an idolatry. In the time of the Apostle Paul, in the city of Athens, in every street of the city was an idol. Can you imagine that? 
in every street of this city was an idol. Those people were so idolaters that they thought we are going to make an altar just in case we are missing an idol. And they made an altar with one inscription. This inscription is in honor to the unknown God. Just in case we are missing one God. When the Apostle Paul saw that, he said, this is the one. This is the one and true God. Hallelujah. This is the one and true God. Egypt was similar. God for everything. The river was a, a, a God for them. So his condition was so poor. How sad, brothers and sisters, to know many God, but not to know the only and true one. How sad to know astronomy, but not to know the one that created the stars. How sad that. What about agriculture? To know about agriculture, but not to know the one that created the earth. That's so sad. And we can continue with the list. What about art? How sad to know about art, but not to know the one that creates the beauty. That's sad. But you know what? What is the saddest thing? To know the Bible, but not to know God. That is the saddest thing. There are many people that know the Bible, but they don't know God. That's the saddest thing. Let's continue knowing God, respecting his plan, obeying him. Don't be rebelled. Be obedient. Not like this man. This man was a dictator, was a rebel man. Pharaoh rebels against God's people. He said, I will not let Israel go. That's it. That's my final answer. God said, that's not your final answer. In a politely way, I'm asking you, please let go my people. Now you are going to know my other side. The Bible said that God is a consumer fire. And he knew the other side of God. I will not let Israel go. He increased the labor. He said, Israel is idol, idol people. Israel, the officer of Israel, the leader of Israel came to Pharaoh and they said, please, what are you doing? You are killing us, increasing our labor. Now we have to produce or to make the same amount of bricks, but you are not bringing us the straw. We had to get the, our own straw to make the bricks. That's more job, but the same amount of bricks. The officer came. Please help us. When we are in troubles, when you are in troubles, where do you go for help? Where do you go? They made a big mistake right here. The leader of Israel came to Pharaoh. Instead to come, instead to turn to God, instead to come to the prophet for help. First, they came to Pharaoh. After that, if you continue reading at home, after that, they came to Moses to complain. But first, they decide to come to Pharaoh, to the king, is going to solve this situation. That's not true. It's so sad when brothers, some brothers and sisters, they decide to turn back to the war. They are in problem, and they decide, oh, over there, I'm going to solve my problems. It's a wrong decision. Let's come to Jesus. Let's come in prayer. Let's start contacting the rest of the members. Please help me. First of all, God, 
then the brothers, then the church. And we are going to be better. This man is saying, it's mocking of them. You are lazy, lazy people. Those who love God must also love his people. The church is God's people. Now, we are the spiritual Israel. We are the people of God. If we say that we love God, let's love the brothers and sisters. Let's love one another. Jesus said, this is not a new command. Just I'm repeating, love, let's love one another. One wise man told me, I'm trying to say, when I see on Sunday the brothers and sisters, I try to say hello to every one of them because I'm not sure if I'm going to see them anymore on next Sunday. Let's love the church of the Lord. Let's love the people of God. Yeah, I'm going to try to do my best to love you because you are the people of God. This man rebelled against the people of God. The conclusion, brothers and sisters, rebellion always produces lamentation. Always. Not sometimes. Always. Submission to God and his will produces satisfaction and joy. The plan of God is that we submit to his will. Jesus said in his prayer, teaching to his apostle, your will be done in earth, on earth as it is on heaven. In the same way. The apostle Paul uh, wrote to the Colossians, I pray that the spirit or the Holy Spirit fill your heart with the will, with the knowledge of the will of God. We need to be filled or heart with the knowledge of the will of God. If you are not a Christian this morning, the invitation is also for you. God is offering you his plan for salvation. He wants to release you or the prison of sin. The way and to be baptized for the remission of your sin. Thank you so much and God bless the whole congregation.